No trees can be really complicated and confusing, but they really don't have to be. After watching this video, you will not only understand no trees, but also how to build them and ultimately how to elevate your color grading. I remember my first time opening up DaVinci Resolve and being really confused by the node editor and what nodes are. I watched tutorials and I just saw crazy node trees like this that were just so confusing and it just made me even more yeah, confused with how to work with this. I was so used to like Photoshop and Lightroom and this was a whole new ball game for me. So my goal in this video is to make you feel as if you understand what node trees are, how to use them, how to use nodes, and to be able to actually feel like you can tackle a grade without being a little bit daunted like I was. So here we go. Nodes are the building blocks of color grading. They don't have to be complicated. Sometimes it can feel a little bit convoluted and like there's so much going on. And you also don't need to have a lot of them. These are two myths that a lot of people believe is that they have to be complicated, your node trees at least, and you have to have a lot of nodes. This is not the truth. So what you're gonna learn in this video is a little bit of familiarization with the node editors, where they are, what they are, and how you can have access to the different ones and what they do. We are also gonna talk about the image processing pipeline and how it works in DaVinci Resolve. This is really important so that you know where adjustments can go within your node tree and so that you can understand why it goes from point A to point B. The two most essential nodes for most node trees is also something that you're going to learn. Uh, this is something that's going to help you be able to build node trees, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, which is how to build a node tree that also works for any project that you're working on and how to conveniently save it so you don't have to rebuild it every single time. These are things that are really gonna help your color grading in DaVinci Resolve. Nodes are the building blocks for color grading. Essentially, they are the bricks that we use to build our, our house, which is the color grade. It doesn't have to be a crazy big house. It can be a really small house, but you have to use nodes to be able to build color grades. All the nodes in your node editor make up your node tree. So I've thrown that term around a lot, node tree. It's essentially all of your nodes together that makes up your node tree because it kind of looks like branches and trees. So Anyway, you get it. It's important that we keep our building blocks neat and ordered so that we have ultimate control over your projects. You can have 20 nodes as long as they are labeled and you understand what they're there for. Each node has its own purpose. And so when you have 20 nodes and you don't, you don't know what the purpose is of them, it's gonna be really hard to track what you've done and even go back and fix mistakes or uh, try and make an adjustment to something that you've done. So it's really important to be able to have control by labeling them, ordering them, and keeping it nice and clean. So let's jump straight into DaVinci Resolve. So this big gray block is our node editor. It is the land on which we build our grades. So let's get a bit of a better understanding of it. In case you didn't know, we actually have multiple node editors. So by default, we have two. If you go up here to the drop down menu and click on it, you'll see that we have our clip node editor as well as our timeline editor. But why do we need more than one? We have our clip node editor, which is open by default. Any adjustments made within the clip node editor is only made to that clip in specific. Whereas if we go to the timeline node editor and I add a new node here, corrector, I'm going to add connectors to the in and output. We'll talk about that just now. Any adjustment I make here, for instance, if I pull down on the midtones and our curves, you will notice if I update all these thumbnails that they all are affected. Everything on the timeline is affected. This is super great in certain situations, but everything on your timeline is affected. So that means any logos or anything else that you have on your timeline will also be affected. So back in our clip node editor, you can see that we have these two little nodules on the left and right hand side. So this is our source input. And so our image data flows through from our source input through these gray lines, which are called connectors into our nodes and the adjustments we make in them. And then through more connectors to our output, which is this here. We then see a preview of our output 
on our playback menu here, oh sorry, on our playback window here. And when we export any of the images, we will also see anything that's been done here and what's coming through our output. So that is the image pipeline in DaVinci Resolve. So as another example of how the image pipeline works, I'm going to click over here and get rid of that connector. And now you can see that we actually, this adjustment is not being processed. All it's actually processing is the input. But as soon as I connect that connector to our output, we now have a updated display because there is an output to our image pipeline. So as you can tell, node trees can be really complicated because there's a lot going on in the background, but all you need to understand is what a node is and how to use one correctly, how to keep things organized and clean, and how the image pipeline works, which you've just learned. Before we carry on, I'd like to share something really exciting with you. As creatives, we are always looking for the best music and sound effects for our projects. Audio is a licensing platform that offers high quality music and sound effects. It also has really cool AI features that makes your life so much easier, like their newly released Hunts AI, which makes finding the right music for your project super easy. You just have to describe what you're looking for and Hunts will suggest relevant songs that's on their daily growing library of tracks. So I'm going to type windy afternoon on a hillside in medieval Greece. And let's play back. It's really cool. They got such great music here. You can just hear the quality. As you can tell, there's a lot of high quality music and Hunt's AI just makes it so much easier to find the right music for your project. Using their Link Match AI feature, you can paste the link to a song that you like and it will find you similar songs to your reference. All the music and sound effects you find on audio is top quality. The sweetest part about all of this is that you can have access to a pro license for 70% off of your first year, meaning that you have access to music, sound effects, Hunt's AI, Link Match AI, and elements all for just $59 in your first year, which is absolutely a steal. Just use the coupon HUNT, H-U-N-T, in your checkout, or you can just click on the link in the description, check it out, try some of the features yourself. You are not gonna be able to get these kind of features in a different platform. So now that you are familiar with the node editor and the image processing pipeline, let's talk about the two most essential nodes that you will ever use, which is the serial node and the parallel node. But before we do, it's important to understand that every node is just a corrector node that you can make any adjustments on. But then why would we need different types of nodes? Well, that's because different types of nodes process adjustments in different ways. And that's why we have all these different types of nodes. It's not because you can make a specific or you should make specific adjustments on specific nodes. It just means that it's going to process that just adjustment in a different way and pass the image data through the pipeline in a different way. So serial nodes are the simple building blocks that give us good foundations. They just feed the image data from the previous node to the next node. So most of your adjustments are most likely going to be done on a serial node because it is a simple way of processing your adjustment. There's nothing special going on, right? Anything that you do on your next node is being done in addition to anything that came before. So image data is just flowing in to your, to your serial node and then out to whatever's coming afterwards. So if you are doing something like one serial node and then the next serial node, you are pretty much just adding as you go. Whereas with some of the other nodes, it doesn't work like that. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Parallel nodes work a little bit differently. So instead of feeding image data from one node to the next, parallel nodes work in conjunction. So when you add a parallel node, you will notice that there's something a little bit different. And as you can see here in our graph, you can see that it looks very different to a serial node. So moving on, you can see that we have this other little baby nodule called a mixer node. And what that is, is a mixer node, which essentially is what makes parallel nodes different. So the mixer processes all of the connected parallel nodes as one node, mixing and blending the adjustments equally. So this is three colored circles on serial nodes, right? They overlap a little bit. And as you can see, we've got our blue, our green, and our red. Here you can see in within the thumbnails of these nodes, you can see we have our red, then we've got our green, and then we have our blue. So if I turn off the blue, and I've turned off the red, you can see that the thumbnails change, these little previews change. So I'm going to turn that on. And right now what you can see is the green 
that is overlapping with the red and green and red is going to make yellow so in addition to they are making a little yellow overlap when i add the blue in you can see that now we have a green a yellow and a pink overlay over here and that's because it's just adding on top of so if i jump over to the parallel nodes and the parallel mixes um, let me just grab this over here so you can see right in the middle over here is pure white and that's because they have mixed these colors all together um, all together in an equal fashion so we do have an overlap we do have these colors that are blending because obviously when you add colors together they, they blend to make different colors but right in the middle what's important is that we have pure white this parallel mixer node is blending all of them absolutely equally so if we jump back to our serial node here you can see that this was a strong yellow because it's just been added to whereas this is blended and we have a white so why would we use something like this so before we talk about that I want to just explain how the image processing works so like we mentioned before this is our source input and here we have our output each of these nodes is getting one source input meaning that they're not going one to the other and then to the other as if they were serial nodes they all have the same source input so this node is interpreting the image data having absolutely nothing on it besides what I've done in this node same with this node and same with this node and then all of those adjustments are being passed on through these connectors straight to this mixer node which is then blending and mixing them all exactly the same way equally and then sending that output straight out so i hope that makes it a little bit more simpler to understand but why would we actually use these types of different nodes so to elaborate on why we would use these nodes in different ways i have three serial nodes and then i have a bunch of parallel nodes all going into the mixer and then going out so on my serial nodes, I like to do things that we call primary adjustments, which is like our balance, contrast, saturation. These are nodes that I said are the good foundational nodes. So even when we're doing CSTs or something similar to that, we're going to be adding them to serial nodes. Uh, what I like to do with parallel nodes is my secondary adjustments, which are more isolated adjustments. So for instance, right over here, I have a power window over this light in the background so that I can bring down the exposure and warm up that light a little bit. So going full screen, I can turn it off and turn it back on. And as you can see, I'm only affecting that part of the image. Um, same here, I have a vignette, which is just adding the subtle darkness to the edges. And over here, I've darkened down the bottom. And here I have worked on her face a little bit. And it's just isolated to that region. The great thing about this is that all of these adjustments are being blended together rather than working on top of each other like these do which just gives us a little bit more of a refined look to our image rather than just adding everything on top of each other we actually have some blending going on which feels more natural and gives us a lot more control so here we have another clip with this man staring out into the wilderness we've done some primary adjustments contrast saturation some balance and then i have these parallel notes i haven't done anything on these in case i wanted to do something different but here I'm using our hue versus hue curves over here as well as our parallel or oh sorry as well as our power windows to give me more control so I have isolated his jacket and as you can see we are just giving it a little bit less saturation and then here I have done a key which is isolating the sky and then I am working on the contrast as well sorry let me turn that off the contrast as well as the saturation in the sky just to give us a little bit more depth in the image obviously this is just an example but it shows you what we can do when we use parallel nodes i know exactly what's going on in this node and i know exactly what's going on in this node and they are blending together which is making it look more refined and better so now that you know all about the two most essential nodes, let's actually build a node tree together. And the great thing about working in DaVinci Resolve is that you can really customize the way that you like to work. So if you like to color grade in a specific way, you can build a node tree that is gonna work for that, as long as you follow the foundational rules. So let's jump straight into it. I'm gonna build a node tree that can work for pretty much any project that you ever work on. So if you wanna just follow along, you're more than welcome to. So I've got some keyboard shortcuts that are gonna make my life a little bit easier. We're gonna start with a serial node and this is going to be noise reduction i always start with my noise reduction it's going to clean up our image pass it straight through into our other nodes which are then going to work on a cleaner image which is great we're then going to go straight into a balance node which is where you can do your white balance and maybe exposure balancing if you need to 
We are then going to go into a contrast node and another serial node. We're going to do our saturation just like that. And I'm just going to order these a little bit so that it makes life a little bit easier to, to understand where we're going. So another serial node, but this time I'm going to add parallel nodes to it like that. So I'm just going to move them around so it's cleaner. And these are going to be our secondaries. So I'm just going to write secondaries. So here you would do power windows. You would do any hue versus hue that you're doing. So let's say the client decided that they wanted this wall to be blue instead of yellow. Obviously with this shot, it's a little bit ridiculous, but in this is where you would do that adjustment. You would isolate that wall with a mask and then you would change the color of that wall. So what I also like to do is sometimes pre-make things that I use often. So like over here, I'm going to write vignette because I often use a vignette. And over here, I'm going to be doing a bottomer, which is something that I use often as well. So in our vignette node, we are going to actually create our vignette without adjusting it too much. So we're just building it so that it's saved for the future. And then I am going to do the same, but for a bottomer. So I'm going to use this, which is a gradient. I'm going to just soften it a little bit. I can show you what it's doing. So as I pull this up, it's softening it. It's not as harsh of an adjustment. And then I'm bringing that down so it's just affecting the bottom there. And now those are already built for me to use later in the future. Here I could do any kind of secondary adjustments and if I ever wanted to add more, I could just keep adding like this. And as you can see, it just keeps adding inputs to the mixer. So afterwards, I'm going to do another two serial nodes. This one is going to be global adjustments, ADJ adjustments. And this one we can just keep as an empty spare node that we can use. Cool. So this is a really simple node tree, at least in my experience. We have kind of condensed one node per operation. So for example, here, yeah, this node, we're only doing noise reduction on because we want that noise reduction to then be passed onto the next image. We're then going to be working on a nice clean image because we um, have done noise reduction, but then we are also doing our exposure and white balance. So when we, when we add in contrast, it's adding contrast to an image that is already nicely balanced. So that's a pretty easy node tree to use. We can then also make life super simple by saving it by going into a power grade album like we did earlier and then just right clicking grab still now if i were to reset our node tree on our node editor like that i could just click my middle mouse button and here we have our node tree as you can see our vignette is still there ready to be used i can just pull down on my gain and you can see how it's working. So it just makes your life a lot easier when you work like this. Build your node trees ahead of time, build certain things in that you like to use all the time, and just make your life easier. But now that you understand how all of this works, you are really well on your way to creating something beautiful. So if you like this video and you wanna see some more, please subscribe, hit the like button, and let me know what you wanna see in the future. But yeah, thanks so much.